Hey, it wasn't good day, everybody. This is Sports Line News. I'm Joe Borkin. This is going to be our next division projections video as we looked at the AL Central, the latest video. Now we're going to look at the NL Central, which is going to be an interesting division because it's kind of ruled by how good a certain somebody does for the Brewers compared to his last season, and then also how good are the cards able to do throughout the entire season and not just a historic rally at the back end of the season. So, those kind of two things play into a factor, but we'll get to that soon. As obviously the last place team, I think everybody would be in agreement here. And the NL Central is going to be the Pittsburgh Pirates. They're still clearly in a rebuild and probably are going to end up trading more talent in Brian Reynolds during the course of this season at some point. Um, the way that they, that can save them, at least make them interesting to watch, is if Mitch Keller can really take off this year. Uh, they have a pitcher in Jose Quintana who they could trade if he does well for them. But, like, when you have Andrew Knapp um, as your backup, who we know from his days here in Philly, Philly fans that listen to this channel, definitely not the best hitting catcher, and got worse at fielding the last couple of years as well. Uh, Roberto Perez is a good fielding catcher and also can hit a little bit uh, when he gets kind of on those runs where he started hits and hits doubles and hits it up in the air and he drives a couple out. Brian Hayes, though, is obviously the most exciting guy for them to watch on the team, and Cole Tucker, I think, is a very exciting young guy to watch. And then Brian Reynolds, the guy that aforementioned, is going to be traded, but there's not enough talent on that team. We just named only a couple people <clears throat> on an entire roster. So, uh, yeah, they're going to be the fifth-place team. The team above them, these teams are going to be interesting because the Brewers cards... Cubs, I think, are all the teams that have the best chance to win the division, where I think the team that's going to end up being in fourth is the Cincinnati Reds, and it's also because the Reds this offseason, albeit kind of did have a confusing bring in some, get rid of some talent offseason, it seems like they're in this retool phase, at least, where the only way I see the Reds making it this year and being one of those extra playoff teams is if their young pitching does fantastic. Like like Hunter Green's going to do well this year, I believe, as a rookie, but he would have to do historically well with Jeff Hoffman doing great this year, with Malley doing great. Like They don't have a lot in that rotation, so it's going to take a lot for them. Tyler Stevenson, though, if I picked a player to watch for them, the catcher Stevenson is definitely a player to watch. That seems like he's great fielder and just going to continue to get better. Uh, behind the or at the dish as well so I would say he's a player to watch for them but they don't have the most spread out talent across their team they do have Mike Moustakis now but again I think they're going to end up being the fourth place club right above the Pittsburgh Pirates probably well above the Pittsburgh Pirates who would probably be in a distant last um, and then third place that right now just because of how solid I think the Cardinals have the potential to be, if they can be more consistent, which they didn't have any of last year, they just rallied at the end. I'm giving second to the Cardinals, so therefore, uh, by default, uh, we have the Chicago Cubs in third place. But that also, with the expanded playoffs, could very well put the Chicago Cubs in the postseason if they're able to be in third in, in a competitive third place and not one of those distant third places because they have Marcus Stroman. Uh, Keegan Thompson did pretty well, so we'll see what he's able to do. Uh, Kyle Hendricks is obviously a good pitcher, even though he's 32, he's still a solid pitcher. But their questions are depth with pitching. You have Stroman, you got Hendricks. How's Drew Smiley going to pitch this year? Um, how's Rucker going to pitch? Like, how's Keegan Thompson going to pitch? Those are the questions. If those guys do well, then they have a chance to potentially move from third to second, it's just, they have a lot of question marks, but hitting-wise, I still like Wilson Contreras a lot, Nico Horner, I think, is going to be great, Madrigal's one of the better just slap hitters, he's never going to hit a lot of home runs, but just slap it around, kind of David Fletcher type player, Alfonso uh, Rivas is a guy that's going to be interesting to watch to see if he can ascend, and then Frank Schwindel, the late bloomer that has a great barrel up rate, he's going to be uh, fun to continue to watch, so hopefully he can continue to succeed as a late bloomer, as well as fellow late bloomer. Patrick Wisdom. So I think this team kind of just has a good mix of talent mixed in. They don't have anybody that just goes, oh my god, this dude's nuts on their team necessarily. But they do have the mix in talent that I think kind of fits together well. Like Clint Fra Frazier, if he can just hit well now that the DH is in there, that's fine. And then Homo Silo is a good um, fielder. Hayward's obviously a great fielder. Ortega is 
a guy that's very good at fielding first. Seiya Suzuki, I think he has a chance to be, I don't know if he'll get a rookie of the year because of his age, but has a chance to be in that competition. And then Ian Happ, I think this might be the year he takes off. So I think all those things considered, I think the Cubs have a good chance to be in third place and a potential playoff spot, but I think it's going to be with adding pitching at some point in the season, whether that's right at the deadline or beforehand, in order to help with that case. But then now we have the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals are the team that I have in second, which obviously then gives the Brewers first place. The reason I have the Cardinals in second is I think they're going to be a very good team. Genesis Cabrera is just on the cusp of what he can do in the bullpen. Ryan um, Helsley, or however you say his name, uh, he was fun to watch in spring pitch well. Jordan Hicks is... Looks like he's back to being fully Jordan Hicks. That's going to be huge for them. Dakota Hudson is a perfect back end of the rotation piece. Steven Matz is going to be an interesting wild card player for them because if he pitches really well, that's even more success there because obviously the one spot you would probably say with the Cardinals that isn't the strongest to start the season, which has to do with injuries as well, is kind of the rotation, but they do have a Pilate who's pretty good. They had a Woodford who pitched pretty solid. Um, stuff wise in the spring so you have to see what happens and Yadier Molina in his final season with Andrew Kniger who's another really good fielding catcher that maybe can get his hitting going a little bit more this year and then the best storyline of the MLB offseason Albert Pujols coming to close his career with the St. Louis Cardinals obviously he'll get to DH and be a great veteran uh, wisdom in the locker room. They still have Goldschmidt. They got Edmund, De Jong, Arenado, and then Edmundo Sosa. Like that infield, no matter who you put in each day, has the potential to be disgusting. And the outfield has the potential to be one of the most underrated in uh, the sport because you have Tyler O'Neill, who's basically a Paul Bunyan type, the way when you look at him. Corey Dickerson, who's consistently, when healthy, been one of the better contact hitters in baseball. Dylan Carlson, who's not even close to hitting his potential yet. And then Harrison Bader, who's very good at fielding and has continued to get better hitting-wise. And then Lars Nuthbar, who's had his moments as well and is only 24 years of age and is probably going to continue to get better. Plus, more minor league talent coming up for this team as well, who has a pretty solid system of guys that are going to continue to come up, which is usually said about the St. Louis Cardinals. So they're being second place. Now on to the first place team, which the, this team is probably the easiest to sum up, the Milwaukee Brewers, just because the biggest key for them getting first place to being in second place and then the cards flipping with them is Christian Yelich, Yelich being the Yelich everybody knows he can be, because their rotation is disgusting. Like You have Corbin Burns in that rotation. Um, on top of having guys like Adrian Hauser, who how well he pitched last year, if he was in other people's rotations, he must hire you. Have Freddie Peralta, who somehow continues to get overlooked at times from some, it seems like. You got Brandon Woodruff, who's absolutely disgusting. Suter's good out of the pen. Jose Urena is good as a long man or as a starter. Same with Eric Lauer. Um, so I think this team, they obviously have it together really well. They have a good bullpen too. Boxberger's been good in his career. Aaron Ashby um is going to emerge as a lefty for them. Devin Williams is obviously disgusting. So th this team's pitching as a whole is very good. They're hitting then. You got Adamas, fantastic. Uh, Keston Hura, I think, is going to continue to grow and be a good player. Their, their thing with them is first base, who's taking that fully if Hura does eventually move back to second, or if Michael Broso, who can kind of take off and do well, or Jace Peterson, then you can kind of bounce it out and have Hira at first base, Rowdy Telez can DH and yada yada if he can get hot. And then you got Colton Wong there as well, who's kind of a wild card who hasn't been the same the last couple of seasons, but has still been okay. Andrew McCutcheon, great locker room guy. We'll see what he's able to do at the dish this year. But Lorenzo Kane and him are great veteran guys in the outfield. Can still kind of get it done. Kane, I think, obviously has more pop in that bat than Kutch at this point in terms of being a good all-around hitter. Kutch is more of a 20 and 60 RBI potential with like a 220-something, 230 average probably at this point. But that's still successful for them because they have Christian Yelich, who I think is going to get back to being not MVP level, but the great version of Christian Yelich that can hit 280 and up and be one of the better hitters that uses all fields in the league and has the pop at the, with that line drive pop. Plus Hunter Renfro, fantastic a pick for them. 
pick up for them. And then you got uh, Tyrone Taylor, who's your fielding wizard in the outfield that you're able to sub in later for either McCutcheon or Lorenzo Cain so you can get those guys off of their legs a little bit. The only thing with the Brewers that the concern would be is maybe their age is a little bit older than some teams when you look at their core guys. But I don't think that's much of an issue because I think their pitching is going to be disgusting. And if Yelich can be the Yelich, everybody knows he can be, which I think he's going to have a great bounce back season this year. Obviously, mm-hmm. I don't judge things off of first series at all. So, But he, I think he's going to continue to get better still and he have a great bounce back season this year because it seemed like from following along the MLB spear on different apps and everything and listening to a bunch of different podcasts and, and uh, shows and everything, he's really committed to trying to get back to being what he knows he can be. So I think this is going to be a year. He might be top, let's say top seven in the MVP, and that's going to really propel them into first place. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below. Up above the easy-to-use widget to keep the channel growing to 230 or more by the end of April. We really appreciate you guys. Love and support this for